Today's video, I will demonstrate wiring to some 1A1 KTUs. This particular KTU that I am zoomed in on, the one that's on the right hand side of the screen, is a 235 concentrator KTU. And then there's one that's on the left side of the screen that is a 235 as well. I have three 241B control KTUs, but I will not be showing those in the video from a wiring point of view. I have here a hundred pair cable that I will be using approximately 60 some pairs for the two 235 KTUs. As you can tell by looking at the cable, there's a blue binder group, an orange binder group, a green binder group, and somewhere in there is a brown binder group. Here in the back side is the brown binder group where my thumb is. So this is four groups of 25 pairs, which makes a 100 pair cable. I have a wiring list that I created for the 235 KTUs. I will demonstrate wiring down a few pairs. I will begin with the blue binder group, starting with the first pair, which will be the white blue, and then I'll continue down until I reach the violet slate. I will only let the camera run for the first few pairs due to the fact nobody would watch the entire process from beginning to end because it's just a very repetitious process. When I'm finished with the 235 KTUs, I will then show a final video of what it looks like. I've done videos for 1A1 and 1A2 that shows 584 panels and other KTUs. This is kind of the final wiring due to the fact I have no more KTUs I can mount in this particular relay rack. I do have some four wires, special service KTUs that will be wired in the future. So I have my 25 pair blue binder group, which is the first 25 pairs of a 100 pair cable. Depending on the type of cable, they will put in their blue plastic for the first group, orange for the second, green for the third, slate for the fifth, and depending on the size of the cable, they can uh, continue on with like the white blue and the white orange, white green, and so forth. One thing I do prior to laying down the cable or fanning it out, I back out all of the screw terminals that I'm going to wire to. This screw has two washers under it. The proper way of wiring is to run the wire up between the two screws, but not wrap it so tight around the screw that when you tighten the screw, you twist the wire, which you can break it off um, and it will not look right. Uh, when you're all said and done for. <clears throat> the proper way of wiring this stuff is to run the wire up, which I'll demonstrate, and cut each wire to the proper length. If I was doing a GTE installation, I would just strip all the ends, wire it up, and make a big knot, and when I was done, it'd look like a mess. Uh, I don't do that kind of workmanship, so I will lay this out neatly. Once these are wired, I would never theoretically ever have to come back and do any changes. Um, <clears throat> the only exception is if I got a pair of wires flopped um, because of my eyesight or whatever. And depending on what it was, I may or may not correct that. I might just correct the stenciling at the 66 block. The 100 pair cable is connected to 66 M150s. Uh, and since the concentrators only need one 
cross-connect lug because of the, the function of the concentrator. <clears throat> Uh, I don't use a 66 M125 or a 66 B25 block because I don't need that many appearances. You have one set of screws that'll go to the phone, and the other screws are the tip, ring, and A that goes to the key system, the 400 line card or the 1A1 line circuit. With my wiring list here, I've started out with tip and ring number line one of the concentrator, or if you wired an 18 button phone, and theoretically it'd be button number one. And then the white orange is the A lead for line one, and the orange white is the A lead for line two. The white, green, green, white is the tip and ring for line two. The white, brown, brown, white is the tip and ring for line three. And the white slate is the A and A, A3 and A4. And the red, blue, blue, red is the tip and ring four. To keep the circuit balanced, the telephone line, the audio path, you never want to go tip ring A and then start with the next tip ring A because you split the pair doing that and it becomes an unbalanced circuit. In a system where you only got a few feet of cable, it worked perfectly fine, but that's not the proper way of doing this. If you had a large system like I've got, I have hundreds of feet of cable that runs between buildings and if I put multiple phones in different places then it'll add to the noise and the unbalance will become a serious issue in my particular case. So I'm going to start out wiring to screw number one, number two, and then I will go down to number nine. Screw number 10, 20, 30, 40, and so forth are the control leads that connects to the telephone. So when you press the line key in the concentrator phone, um, then you operate the relays in whatever sequence is needed for that line. So I will start out with the white-blue pair, and then um, while I'm at it, I'll just bring out all three of the first lines. I'll run it up to here. And as long as I can see the colors okay, I shouldn't make any mistakes. I never guarantee that. But. So right now I'm making them tight, which is not the correct results. But for what I'm trying to do, I'll show you why I'm doing this. Okay, so I have right now two lines that would connect to the 400 KTU or the 1A1 line unit. So in order to get my leads correct length, I will take these and cut them off at next to the set of screws to the right. And then I will come back and strip all of these wires off and then I'll show you how they lay down so that they can um, look neat. I'm using tinned wire so which is what you would normally find in a CO building.
So I have three pairs connected, and then I would do the next three leads, which would be um, the white brown and white slate. So then I will continue on and I will do the same process as before. And I should have the white slate down on number nine. And then the slate white will come over and go up in the next row. Alright, so I have nine of the ten wires done, so I'll continue until I reach the end. Here is a completed view of the wiring on the two 235KTUs. Here is the rear of a 239KTU that has some common leads that goes to the interrupter for the lamps. The leads are connected to a 238 panel below, which I will show. And here's the common equipment side of the 238 panel. And then here's the line equipment wiring for the common tip and ring that goes to the backboard. That would be the tip ring A, A1LGL. Down below is the 584 panels, and this is the power, the ringing, and the leads to the 412 KTUs for making the lamps all be synchronized with one another. And I have eight of these panels. I will show the bottom where the power supply is. Here is one of two power supply is that is wired to my 584 panels, the 1A1, the 1A2. Here is the front of the 235 KTUs and the 241s which I have not yet wired. 